that show Slim. Slim was love. Like Slim pull up in that Cali, you and be yeah. out there all day, and he a leader and going to St. Bernard and going to Opera yeah. Field. Like he was one of the ones that could go in every project too. And I tell everybody like Slim got killed before he could. He was going through that transition mm-hmm. and make that change. I heard that. Like he said in one of his songs, um, "I'm coming closer with God, asking Him to forgive me." Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Let me ask y'all a question. Um, Soldier Slim, I always ask a lot of people this because especially being from New Orleans, I know a lot of people who talk very highly of him. Um, you you knew him, of course. Yeah, I know him for sure. So for sure. tell me about him growing up and so forth. Slim used to cut my hair. Him and my cousin was best friends. My cousin, like, who he used to run under. His mm-hmm. name was Rez. They called him Slugged Up Nigga. Mm-hmm. So... Under KLC and on um, Parkway Pumping Records, that's who my cousin used to rap for. He was supposed to sign a Master P before so did Slim. He got mm. killed. So I know Slim, like, Slim had it since young. Like, as young Magnolia Slim, mm-hmm. he was that dude with rapping and everything. Mm. Like, for sure, for sure. Wow. And for you? Well, Slim, man, Slim was always my, uh, that's my favorite rapper. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So What's your favorite up, song? Ooh. Since he your favorite rapper, <laughs> you when you say favorite song, I don't know if I got a favorite favorite song. One that stands out. Give me one. Why well, pay for it? Thing, I pay for it. I pay for it. I pay for it. I pay for it. If I won't need. You know okay. what I'm saying? There was just like okay. a gangster dude on some sw- on some swag shit. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So it's uh-huh. like I right, bet, but he got. Class and you know he was telling the truth like mm-hmm. so it's always he always drew me to him i like his rap style and mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but nah slim was legend no because a lot of people because since we've been going back and forth to new orleans a lot of people always talk about him and talk about him very highly but i've met some people who say that you know it's just now that he's gone everybody's talking so good about him but when he was around people wasn't really just you know dealing with him like that nah that's mm-hmm. cap that's, that's cap. cap like one thing for sure, Slim. Slim was love. Like, Slim pull up in that Cali, you and be yeah. out there all day, and he a leader and going to St. Bernard and going to Opera Field. Yeah. Like, he was one of the ones that could go in every project, too. And I tell everybody, like, Slim got killed before he could, he was going through that transition mm-hmm. and make that change. I heard that. Like, he said in one of his songs, um, I'm coming closer with God, asking him to forgive me. You feel me? Like, mm-hmm. we, he died in the middle, of, like, the X pills hit. New Orleans and it went crazy. It took the scariest person on there and made him real mm-hmm. on drugs. And you ride around in that slim and you on some right. X pills, you out your mind. You mm-hmm. might shoot up a whole crowd. Mm-hmm. And that ain't what Slim was rapping right. about. It was it was murder with a purpose. Like it was always get the money first. Mm-hmm. And Slim died before he could make that transition mm-hmm. to, to change that whole culture of New Orleans. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. he was trying to change that culture of New Orleans. Wow, Slim is one of them ones. Hey, every show we get we we get a mention on Slim, boy, cause everybody said they loved him. It, it was a, it was a, well, everybody felt him when Slim got killed. Yeah, real talk. So, um, since both of y'all in you know in music, right? I've always said you know being a mother and raising children and children are into this music. People always come sit at that seat and talk about the music helped me through. The music did this. Music did that. But now with the music the way how it is, especially rap music, always talking about shooting, killing, robbing, all of that sort of stuff. I know people who are entertainers who said, I don't even let my kids listen to this or I have to change my way of what I'm rapping about because now I have children who are listening to this. Right. How can I be that representation? So what do you think about the music and where it's at right now and the young people that are listening to it? Uh we talk about this in the car on the way up here. Like, I don't listen to that. If it don't feed my soul, I don't listen to it. And right. I don't, it was one of the reasons I stopped rapping because it's like, I rap my life already. It ain't nothing else. What I'm doing right now, that shit boring to them. They don't want to hear that. Right. Mm-hmm. And when me and him got back together, it's like hearing what he rapping about. I say, you a very special person when you could get on a beat and it say exactly what you want to say, not what the beat make you say. Because a lot of people just put words together and they don't mean none of what they saying. Shoot him and spin on him and smoke his grandmother. And you don't mean none of that. You ain't even right. living like that. It sound good. But you will put that out there and you will have somebody who look up to you and go do exactly what you saying in a song. You mm-hmm. feel me? Because it's mm-hmm. like the difference on the influence with me, it was, it was more of a get money culture coming up. Like every rapper rapped about getting money. Mm-hmm. Like you ain't respect no robbers or somebody who talk about taking something from somebody. Like they got killed fast. Mm-hmm. So it was always about the hustlers. 
But then the music shifting is about the killers and the drug users. So it's like, who could take the most drugs? If you could get on Molly and Percocet, right. you you lit. <laughs> you feel mm-hmm. me? Like you on you on a speedball. Right, right, right. And all these rappers be telling their business in this music. That's why a lot of these recos and they arresting people and all right. of that because of that. And I would always think, I'm like, how can you be so stupid? Facts. Wow. Let's talk about tough guy, man. Help me out with that. What, 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 what? How did that become about that label? Tough guy was that was my homie Dodo, man. My okay. homie Dodo and him and Master P was like, they was good friends. So um, one day he just was on the porch like, man, we're gonna start a record label. And I'm gonna make P sign us. He ain't say I'm gonna ask P. Like I'm gonna make <laughs> P sign us. And like, he don't know no fucking Master P like that. <laughs> and he started the label and he put some groups together and then he got um a business partner. They brought Mr. Marcelo and then he went straight to Master P and got a deal. And I remember one day we was on a porch and the phone rang and Priority Records telling him he went gold. And it's like, you went gold, nigga. You sold 500,000 albums? Like, shit, it's time to hit the road now. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard, man. For real, though. Because it was like, then once he got that phone call and said that, he like, no more drug dealing. Like, if all y'all, gonna, whoever going to hustle, y'all go over there with that shit. We going to do it. So it went music. bam, bam, bam. Yeah, it went bam, he bam, bam. He told you and boom, it happened. Yeah, for sure, for so sure. So was Currency, Currency was a part of that, right? Yeah, Currency was a part of that. He came part of the, like, the, the, the second leg of Tough Guy. Like, once we went gold, then he formulated the, like a, a record company. And then Marcelo brought Currency. And that's where he started at. Wow, how how is it? Have you 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 and Currency done hung out? And Yeah, yeah, that's my brother. How How is it, how is Currency these days, like... I know he came to Dallas one time. I was like, I was trying to get him on the show, but I didn't know you at the time. I wish I'd have knew you then. I don't oh, yeah, think they call sure, in. Sure. But, him with the, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but how is he? I mean, I've been a big fan of him. Yeah, he good. I just left another day, man. We did a um, car show down there for Essence Fest. Let him know Boss Talk watching out for him. I'm always watching. That. You know what I mean? Big Brother watching. I'm Big Brother now. I'm with these cameras. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, so for sure, for like, sure. like, so... Do you feel like Tough Guy was a good representation as a branch out from No Limit like that? Hell yeah. It was it was the it was the guys that Master P wouldn't take on No Limit. They could come under Dodo because it's like he that street guy and he the one who he respect him. So if you tell him chill, chill, like see murder hung under Dodo. So every time see murder come from California, he hanging under Dodo. And Dodo that move and shake are like, you know, his word is law. What happened to Dodo? Dodo got killed. How? Street shit. So yeah, I know how y'all is in New Orleans. I ain't nobody. <laughs> street shit. That's it. No, I'm not. Shit. Well, I mean, did he get shot? Did yeah, he, he got. Yeah, he got shot up. But that's like in the Calio projects. Nah, nah, they ain't okay. coming back there. Okay, nah. I'm just asking. You know, what I'm mean? like, like yeah, from yeah. the outside looking in, you be yeah, like, it don't really happen like that in the Calio. Like people don't come in the Calio and kill people. Like, nah, that wasn't happening. Yeah, we on Boss Talk One on One. Yeah, we gonna talk.